Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's John Lucas at Pachulski Staying Zeal and Jones, counsel to the Tort Claimants Committee. And I'm Doug Kennedy, a member of the Tort Claimants Committee. And one of the things we've heard from survivors is that they would like a little bit more direction in how to complete the ballot and send it on back so their ballot is counted. So on the website of the TCC, which is tccbsa.com, we do have a file that shows a ballot and there's red highlighting and we encourage you to look at that, but we also want to do a video just to, to run through the important pages and talk a little bit about it. Uh, let me say at the outset that obviously the tort claimants committee is encouraging survivors to reject this plan, but you need to make that decision uh, for yourself. And we know that everyone's circumstances and feelings about this is individual and we respect those. So the purpose of this is not how to fill it out to reject the plan. It's just for you to understand the proper way and mechanism and mechanics of, of filling this out. So John and I are gonna discuss this. Let me share the screen. Hey, Doug, before you do, I just wanna just sure. say one thing. You know, another thing is that the ballot is 22 pages and they sent you a little envelope or any envelope and it's hard to get all 22 pages in there. So the pages that you need to return are pages one, five, six, eight, and 17. And again, that's pages one, five, six, eight, and 17. And we're gonna walk through those very pages right now. So let me go ahead and share my screen for this. There we go. Okay, John, so we're now looking at the, the very first page. That's right. And on that page, uh, what are the important parts here that we just want people to understand? At the top, at the very top, can you scroll to the top? It has a ballot up there that has all the ones there. That's a yep. ballot ID. And your claim number there is at the bottom there. And it also have your name in it. And so, you know, you were sent a ballot by Omni, or if you wanna get your own ballot from Omni, you can request um, the ballot from Omni and, uh, and this, all this information will be pre-printed on the ballot that you receive, and it will be keyed to you. And it'll be, you know, Doug, if this was Doug's ballot, you know, Doug's name would be on it and his claim number and his ballot ID. John, would you recommend that people, before they return this, just go ahead and write these numbers down just so that they have them for the reference? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Let's go on then to page five. So page five here is just another important page. There's nothing to fill out on the page, but um, it shows you who your claim is against, which is the Boy Scouts of America, and that the claim is valued at $1, which because it has to be valued at something to vote, there has to be. And so all sexual abuse claims are estimated for a dollar just for purposes of voting the actual value of your claim will be determined, be determined under the trust distribution procedures. Yeah, that, that's an important point, John. So we don't want anybody to think that their claim is valued for an award purpose at a dollar. It's just to show that in our class, everyone who votes all has, it's all valued at the same amount. So this is kind of just a bankruptcy thing. They assign randomly a $1 amount to every, every claim. Correct. Okay. All right, so now we go to page, I was page five, so now we go to page six, and this is their first very important page. Yes, um, so this is the page where on the upper portion of the box there, on, on the box there is you decide whether or not you want to accept or reject, and you choose only one. Don't check both boxes. If you check both boxes, then the ballot will be invalid. So choose whether to accept or reject, and, uh, and it goes without saying that uh, the TCC is recommending that parties reject. So John, th this brings up a question and that is, so if somebody, I know that we already have reports that some of the ballots aren't being filled out correctly and that's just probably a mistake someone's making. Can, can someone send in another ballot and if they change their mind or they just wanna double, make sure that they did it correctly or they just think, they're watching this right now and they say, oh no, I think I checked both of them by mistake. Um, then they should go to Omni and request a new ballot and fill it out and send it in. The ballot that's received later in time will supersede 
the original ballot and the later in time ballot will control. Okay, and again, that has to be received by Omni by what date? December 14th at 4 p.m. Eastern time. And so it needs to be in Omni's hands by that date, not postmarked by that date. Right, and also, yeah, that's an important point. And we know that the postal service is gotten a bit slower recently and also we're going to be in christmas card season so people shouldn't wait until the last second would you recommend that people send this in you know registered mail or you know a fedex envelope or something where they know it's been received uh that's always helpful something that you could track um th that the envelope has um been delivered to the location that's always helpful Okay, so the next portion then is uh, is this uh, item three and the uh, and the the expedited election. Can you explain that? Absolutely. So the expedited distribution election is where a survivor is willing to accept a one time thirty five hundred dollar payment for the abuse and. Um, there's no requirement to accept this, but this is a one and only and final payment that resolves all issues with respect to any survivor and the Boy Scouts and, and any other party. And so th this, this, so just, this is it. And so some people believe maybe their claim isn't that good, or maybe the statute of limitation um, will be very challenging with respect to their claim. And or they just don't want to go through the process anymore of having to deal with the um, the support and the sort of the factual backup to push their claim farther through the trust distribution procedures. So I think it's important to to mention that the TCC from the beginning has encouraged survivors to have legal counsel. These are difficult questions. Uh, and to you know, give answers to on an individual basis for for someone like John or or the TCC. So you have to consider whether or not this applies to you. But the TCC does respect the fact that for some people, they're just going to say, "I don't want to go through the process that the trust is going to have to undertake to validate my claim. So I want to get a thirty five hundred dollar award, and that will be it." So John, a couple questions. One is if someone checks this box and then uh, and then let's just say that this plan goes through, can they change their mind? No, this is it. This is a, this is a final election. And so um, if you check the expedited distribution election, um, you could still choose to reject the plan, but you're only going to receive a distribution if the plan is approved and goes effective. Okay. All right. So, so people can ch check, reject the plan, but also vote for this the same way they can check, accept it and vote yes. for this as well. Uh, and it is, I think it's also important to say that if you check this box uh, and send this back in, don't start checking your, your mailbox for a $3,500 check. Uh, there's still going to have to be a process and the trust is still going to have to, uh, is still going to have to validate this to some degree, aren't they? Yes, there are some minimum requirements that are set forth in the trust distribution procedures about what's required in your claim um, to be entitled to receive this distribution um, under this election. Um, and again, the confirmation hearing doesn't begin until January 24th, and it will last probably numerous days, and it'll be some time, maybe a month even after that, um, before the, the plan could become effective. And right. so, you know, okay. this isn't something that's going to be happening here at the end of the year. Um, it'll probably be, you know, if the plan is approved um, next spring or maybe even uh, late spring, or early summer before the expedited distributions start going out at the, if the plan is approved. And you also, again, Johnny brought an interesting point, and that is that people can check this box, uh, but can also vote to accept or reject. This isn't just for those people that accept the... Uh, the settlement. Correct. Okay. And then the last thing that has to be voted on, and the thing that probably is a bit more confusing to a lot of people is this item four, the optional release election. And this is on page, goes down to, to page eight. 
Uh, and this is the opting out of the third party release. So what does this mean to the, the claimant that perhaps uh, hasn't been able to discuss this with their attorney or does not have an attorney? Um, that if you scroll back up there to the bottom of, uh, of the page there, there's a footnote there, and there's a definition of the parties who, whose claims that would be getting released. And so um, this does not relate to your sexual abuse claim. This relates to other claims that a survivor might have against any one of these released parties. Um, what I have been advising or recommending to parties is that if you don't know if you have any of these claims, then you should just opt out. There's nothing that impairs or harms your rights by opting out. And so my recommendation is that if you just don't know whether or not you have any of these claims that you need to protect, then just opt out. And then you're in the same position than you are today and you will be tomorrow. Okay. All right. And, and just to be clear, we, we jump from page six to eight. We're just not showing page seven on the screen here. So, mm -hmm. okay. And then, uh, so then we get down to page 17. And, and again, we'll run through these page numbers at the end, but there's a number of pages beforehand. And then we get to this portion. And, and again, this is a, 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 another critical page. Um, you need to print out your name, the last four digits of your social security number, your birth date, you must sign it. You have to sign it and um, fill out all the other information that's, your, that's there, your street address, your telephone number, your email, the date that you did this, um, fill out all the information there and complete it. And then as Doug said, you will take pages one, five, six, eight, and 17, and you'll put them into an envelope and you'll mail it to Omni. So, and, uh, so John, I, and we'll get to the address in a second, but I do have a question for you. And that is my handwriting is horrible. So I, I might be inclined to go ahead and, and, you know, type this out or something. Uh, a lot of people do this electronically. Does the signature have to be with a, a pen or can I just get a, like a font that looks like a signature? Um, if you are going to use a font or something that, that looks like a signature, um, then you need to have uploaded the, the, the ballot through the Omni electronic portal. And so that's basically taking your ballot and converting it into a PDF after it's been fully completed and taking that document electronically and uploading it into the portal. Only in that situation um, can you use sort of a a DocuSign or some other type of electronic signature. Um, but if you're going to be mailing it in, then you, you need to put pen to paper and sign it. Okay. And where, where would somebody find the address for the portal to do this electronically? Um, you will find it on page 18, which is the next page. So let's go to page. It's nice when sometimes this works out well, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So here's page 18. So on the box on the right there, if you're going to use old fashioned snail mail um, and, you know, it's perfectly acceptable to do and just put those pages one, five, six, eight and 17 in an envelope and send it to that address there and uh, your ballot will be processed by Omni. Um, however, if you have the ability and know how to upload the document that is complete on your computer through a PDF file. Um, you go to that website and you will upload the document into the claim portal, if you will, that's found on that website. Um, you'll obviously need to know your name, which you all know your name, but at the top there, you'll need to know your ballot ID and your claim number, and you will need that information to input into uh, a couple of the uh, uh, information screens that require um, you to, to fully fill out sort of the ballot before it's uploaded, so. Okay, uh, and then of course, we just have on here the last page 19 as the, just to sort of, uh, again, this is the address it goes to, right? And, and you can also, if you live close to Woodland Hills, California, I guess you can drop it off, huh? Uh, I, I, I suspect you probably could, but. So here's a question for you, John. Uh, when people do this, 
Uh, is anybody on the other end going to say, got it, you uploaded it correctly, or we received it and everything's correct? Um, so I haven't been through the claim portal myself, but I believe you probably get some sort of confirmation that it was received or uploaded and I would, you know, take a picture or a screenshot or save whatever communication that you get with the electronic sort of transaction. But I do not believe you get anything if you do something by snail mail. So, Right. And, and it's probably critically important that everyone understands that they really need to make sure that they filled this out correctly before they upload it, before it goes in the mail. It's going to be a lot easier to take time to do it correctly before it goes out than to try and fix problems after the fact, right? That's correct. Right. Well, John, thanks a lot. We hope that this has been valuable. I just want to remind everyone that the TCC will be having uh, its uh, town halls every Thursday night. We'll continue to update people with whatever issues come up uh, and we'll continue to answer questions. I think our last town hall, we answered how many, John? Uh, close to 600. Yeah, close to 600. So we're doing the best we can to represent all survivors. Uh, and uh, if we need to revise this, we will. But please check, keep checking our website, tccbsa.com. Thanks. Thank you, everybody.